Hello, everybody. My name is Solga Fröhlich. I'm the head of the AI and data science team at Fraunhofer Sky. And today I am giving you this talk about the IMI project Radar ID on behalf of Martin Hofmann Opitius, who unfortunately cannot be here with us today. And Martin is the PI on Fraunhofer side for this project. Overall, uh, the RAID ID project is a joint undertaking of 16 different partners, industry as well as academic partners. And it is jointly coordinated by Doug Arsland from the KCL and Vaibhav Narayan from JPNV. So what is the main goal of RADAR ID? So the RADAR ID deals in essence with the increasing availabilities and the increasing uh, possibilities of um, technology, devices and sensor-based technology that allow us to assess in one or the other way the disease status or features of the disease status of people. So for example, via gate measurements, via different smartphone applications, et cetera. So in uh, Radar ID, the idea is to validate and uh, enable such approaches in order to measure quantitatively the functional decline in people with early stage AD. So what is the expected value? The expected value is threefold. So on, uh, on one hand, due to these technologies, in principle, a monitoring of the disease can happen at home. So that means remotely also outside the clinics and in principle 24 seven. So this has of course big advantages for the actual disease management for the physician, but also for caregivers. A further advantage, however, is that the measurements taken by digital devices and sensors are objective. So they can give rise potentially to objective biomarkers of the disease, which can be used, in, for example, in the context of clinical trial design to obtain more objective outcome measures. So this has to be seen in the context of the limitation of current approaches, which largely focus on uh, classical cognitive assessment scores, which are questionnaire based, test based in the clinics. So um, such scores have um, two limitations. On one hand, they have a high day-to-day -day variability, simply because patients are not every day the same. And second, they are at, at many places depends on a subjective rating. So in contrast, uh, digital device-based technology here offers um, to overcome both of these aspects. So due to um, uh, measurements of disease outcome of disease phenotype over time, we are probably making more robust assessments. And on the other hand, um, we can have something more, less subjective, more objective. So um, in the light of these potential, the specific goals of Radar ID is to model functional and cognitive decline using existing data at first place, then to identify functional domains indicative of decline, to select devices and perform pilot studies and in specifically in an observational clinical study context. And last but not least, and this is quite important, to liaise with patients, caregivers and regulators in order to understand the acceptance of such solutions. So this is very important because in essence, none of these um, outlined potentials can be realized if there's no buy-in from uh, all the relevant stakeholders in the healthcare sector. So there are different approaches and ste or steps taken in the Radar ID project. 
So one important step is to define meaningful disease relevant functional domains and via that um, to select according devices for digitally measuring functional tasks. Second, um, then these devices are used and applied in a small pilot study. And um, based on data that is collected um, from available longitudinal cohorts, but of course also then um, later on in the actual radar ID study, the idea is to model functional and cognitive decline. Then um, a further point, a, a, a thing is to um, assess and extend um, the radar-based technology platform, which has been already developed in another um, IMI project, radar CNS. And this platform actually allows to connect in a remote manner, in a federated manner, different device technologies and to bring together, in essence, the data. So this is, this is obviously quite important. And um, yeah, then there's obviously the social aspect that I already outlined. So the identify barriers and facilitators for its successful implementation through the engagement with patients, healthcare providers and regulators. And um, from a scientific point of view, of course, to validate the technology that has been used here. Um, specifically also via a observational clinical study. And the idea is that if this validation is successful, so then uh, one would like to work with regulatory agencies to develop a path to formally define outcome measures in assessing therapeutic interventions in Alzheimer's disease. So in other words, to use this really in interventional clinical trials. So where are we at the moment in this project? So the project started uh, in January 2019. Um, now we have September 2020 and the project uh, will then run to um, end of June 2022. So that means um, there are a bit less than two years to go. The overall project is divided up into six integrated work package plus an additional work package focusing on the management and coordination. So one package, uh, work package here, work package two here focuses on definition of functional domains relevant to early Alzheimer's disease progression. So then we have a work package focusing on the clinical validation. Um, we have a the work package focusing more on the technology platform. So this is the radar base um, thing. And uh, then last but not least, we have two work packages focusing on regulatory and um, patient uh, involvement, ethics and uh, interactions, etc. And of course, there's also work packages for fo work package focusing on communication and dissemination. The observational clinical study in RIDER ID um, has in essence two levels, a tier one and a tier two. So the tier one study is already multi-center, it's um, cross-sectional, however, only, and it focuses on the digital assessment um, in, cohort, in the cohort of patients with preclinical Alzheimer's disease, MCI to Alzheimer's, and mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. In, um, in the first tire, the assessment will be done for approximately seven day, 70 days, so eight weeks of data collection. The schema is outlined here below, so you can see that there are in essence two um, clinic days here, at um, the beginning and at the end. And in between, there are different phone calls, three ones. And then there are also certain devices tested at home. So the devices um, that are selected here for the tire one study comprise a variety of different aspects. So on one hand here, we have a device um, that focuses on accelerometry. So basically can measure movement 
We have another um, technology that um, focuses on uh, yeah, also heart rate, um, steps, uh, sleep patterns. Um, and uh, this has also specifically the ability to um, use a smartphone and uh, a cloud for data streaming. Then we have another um, device that focuses on gate parameters and uh, smartphone based applications that measure different things. So we have one here that um, focuses on um, finance. And uh, for example, uh, this one here from Altoida focuses on cognitive decline metrics via, in essence, an augmented reality game. So in the TIA2 study, um, more technologies are also installed at, in the subject's home. And um, the TIA2 study here will last an additional 50 days. So there are four weeks of data collection with a flexible time between the studies for arranging home device wiring. Examples of devices to be um, tested at home at this stage are, for example, this one here, which will be installed uh, within uh, a car, of, within the car of the patient, and um, measures, in essence, driving behavior. So um, you can see here things like start, stop, speed, direction, etc. So altogether, the promise is if that project is successful, so then the hope is that via that we can transform patient care through remote assessments. So this digital device technology. And uh, that fo following from that, we can develop a path to formally define um, outcome measures in uh, therapeutic intervention studies. So, uh, which would then obviously be the actual, also from pharmaceutical industry perspective, desired uh, value. So obviously this all must be done in close cooperation with regulatory authorities and patients. So um, we are particularly with my team involved in work package two here, which is about the assessment of functional domains to early Alzheimer's uh, disease progression. The work package has two goals. Um, one goal is to define disease relevant functional domains sensitive to early AD progression and predictive of long term outcomes, such as loss of independence and nursing home entry. And um, these functional domains then that will be selected um, will, uh, will be um, basically used also in other work packages. And the other aspect is the modeling of functional and cognitive decline using existing longitudinal Alzheimer's cohort uh, data sets. Let me now um, talk a little bit more about um, the work that we have particularly done in my team here. And uh, this work has specifically been um, carried out here by my PhD student, Meman Sazot, who has given the talk yesterday, um, also together with a master student, Mohamed Aborake. So the work started in essence with a, a more literature-based prioritization of functional domains relevant to early AD uh, for RMT-based assessment. So this was something that Mimansa did together with um, collaborators from pharmaceutical industry specifically. But um, apart from a literature-based validation, which would then basically feed information into the design of the study, there's of course also the question more from a data-driven perspective, whether we can say something about which functional domains, um, in first of all, in classical um, clinical assessment scores, define a difference between MCI and Alzheimer's patients, and second, how this um, compares to what you measure with digital devices. In order to answer this question, um, we use in essence a relatively straightforward machine learning based approach 
in which we um, train standard machine learning methods uh, such as random forests and gradient boosting machines to discriminate simply between MCI and Alzheimer's patients um, using um, specifically um, functional assessment scores and demographics and APOE status. So the idea would then be that, um, so we evaluate these classifiers, of course, to understand the level of discrimination that we get between Alzheimer's disease and, and, and MCI. And, uh, and specifically why we also use these classical approaches is that via these uh, measure methods, we can analyze then the most important uh, functional assessment scores. So hence better understand um, the discriminators between these disease uh, states. So, and then in essence, the idea is once where we have the data, which we haven't yet, that you would apply also the same time of approach for radar AD patients. And then check indeed um, for, for um, the, in this case, we are digital to measure uh, assessed uh, functional domains in how far A, they would discriminate again between MCI and Alzheimer's patients. And second, how, which of the uh, according um, measures or features would be most um, 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 discriminative or predictive and that then can be compared to what we have found in our um, other longitudinal and pre-existing studies. So this it just gives you some sort of idea of what um, we have found here. So for this again, so this is just a classical random forest classifier here. And um, we have trained this here with data on one hand from ATNI, um, on the other hand, also with data from um, other cohorts like NACC and JATNI. Um, the functional domains are, um, that you see in these different data sets are not identical, but um, as you can see here, so these are the top, um, according to the, to the importance measure of a random forest, the top features here. So you can see that they're nonetheless um, roughly comparable. So they cover, let's say, roughly different domains. And um, all together, in essence, that led to the conclusion so that uh, with such a machine learning approach, um, one can uh, identify the most relevant domains discriminating between uh, functional domains, sorry, discriminating between Al my MCI and Alzheimer's rather consistently across uh, three different cohorts. And as I outlined, so in essence, why we do this is because we like to understand how this would compare then later on to what we see with digital measures that are supposedly assessing the same functional domains. So, um, however, at this point of view, um, there's of course also another important question up, popping up. And this is, um, I mean, we have so far here just assumed in essence that certain digital biomarkers or measures are surrogates here for exactly one functional domain. So there's more or less a one-to-one -one correspondence here between um, classical cognitive assessments with specialized-based approaches to certain digital biomarkers. But in a more general sense, this is, this is far from being obvious that this is the case. So the relationship between digital biomarkers and classical assessment scores is not at all clear. Yet, um, this is a key for validating also digital biomarkers. So in the context of digital biomarker validation, first of all, it has to be clear in how far a digital biomarker is reflected what it is expected from classical measures. But again, so then the question pops up how these are actually related to each other, specifically also uh, quantitatively. In order to answer this question, um, Nemanza has already shown you yesterday here this plot where we used indeed data here from um, our collaborator in the project is Altoida comprising information from or data from patients uh, which have been on one hand under, uh, underwent a um, smartphone based uh, virtual reality test for assessing cognitive behavior 
And on the other hand, they have been assessed in a classical way by our MMSE-based questionnaire. So um, in addition, of course, we have demographic information about this uh, person. So now what we did is to uh, use our um, approach here that Nemanza has talked about yesterday in her talk um, called Wamben, which is in essence a um, mixture or a combination of a Bayesian network approach with um, variation autoencoders and allows us to disentangle now um, in the data mining sense also the relationship between uh, different variables in the in the data and specifically here um, what we what we are able to find out here in this way is how um, different um, MMSE subscores for example are related to which subtypes of um, digital outcomes such as for example here in this case you see that uh, the orientation uh, measured by a MMSE here or the ability to orient is for example related um, to the ability measured um, in the app-based test to draw a serpentine or visual spatial orientation to um, the ability to draw a, or the speed to draw a circle etc so these things are all re is, uh, related to each other as you can see here in a quite dedicated way so they are not unrelated but they are also not one-to-one -one, obviously so there's not a one-to-one -one correspondence obviously that is one of the key outcomes of MMSE subscores and digital measures is, is a much more complicated uh, relationship. And indeed this entire network here, so which is here visualized just as a network is in reality fully quantitative. So you can, you can, we can actually look, um, so these are in essence local, uh, these are regression models in essence behind. So we can in essence say something about um, the level of uh, relationship that or correlation that exists between each of these different variables here quantitatively. So because this is quantitative also we can use this approach here for making predictions. So this is also something that um, Mimanza has shown you yesterday. So we can for example ask ourselves so whether these digital biomarkers if they are connected in such a non-trivial way can be predicted uh, from a classical MMSE scores, gender and uh, information about whether the patient was AB positive or not, whether he had um, MCI or not yet. And indeed, this seems to be the case. Of course, we need to compare this prediction part further to other machine learning approaches. But in essence, what we are, what we are after here is to predict then digital outcomes uh, in ADNI that otherwise are not measured there. And then, of course, what we can do is we can apply our Wamben approach um, there also then including these digital measures and learn associations between molecular mechanism, imaging markers, clinical measures, and these particular including functional domains and digital outcomes. And then we have in essence what we are after here. So we understand then better how functional domains and digital outcomes are connected, which are not directly measured in the Atuida data. And we want to apply the same strategy, of course, also to other cohorts um, in containing functional domains such as J, ADNI, NACC, and um, in the future also maybe Amsterdam Dementia cohort. So we have applied at least for access. What we also aim for doing next is to develop longitudinal models for activity of daily living and functional domains, so really predictive models. And uh, for that purpose, we can indeed um, use on one hand this Wamben approach again, but on the other hand, we have also uh, developed an own and new, very new methods, um, which uh, you can also look at at the poster of Philip Wendland. So this method, uh, I won't go here into the details of it, so you can talk to Philip directly. But in essence, this is a full hybrid of a um, or ordinary differential equation model, which is in this case, you're supposing the unobserved, so latent and the neural network um, structure. So um, resembling an encoder and a decoder structure coupled indeed with another um, neural network component that allows us also to include static data, multimodal static data, such as demographics or also genotype. 
the entire network, and this is a distinction point, you know, the entire model, sorry, is, this is a distinction point to, um, uh, for example, Wamben, um, is that it's really a continuous time model. So it allowed, allows us to really, um, for example, interpolate here between different time points as um, pointed out here by this figure below here. It is fully generative, so that you can use it also for simulating uh, synthetic data, um, such as what Memansa has talked about yesterday. And it is uh, also predictive. A final point is that it also allows to impute uh, missing values that we frequently have via a technique that you um, um, have already um, heard about in yesterday's talk of, um, of Johan de Jong, um, which was about our um, Vader approach for, um, for a clustering of longitudinal clinical data. So what do we do now with the predictions for radar AD patients or what do we want to do with them? So, well, actually what we're aiming for then is to use this model and make predictions um, of the um, cognitive of the impairments of um, uh, functional assessment scores in that, that are now in this case here really questionnaire based. And then compare this indeed to what we see as a level of impairment measured by digital outcomes. And then a question that we want to answer in this way is whether um, digital outcomes would in some sense be more sensitive. So would indicate in essence a, um, the same level of impairment earlier compared to what we um, predict here with our model. So to sum up here, um, digital biomarkers derived from wearable sensors and devices as well as smartphone apps have really the potential to transform healthcare and Alzheimer's disease from my opinion. So this is due to the ability, possibility to continuously monitor disease progression also at home and to receive objective outcome measures rather than subjective ones. And uh, the impact points are really for clinical trial design and also clinical routine, including um, daycare. And uh, of course, and this is really why Radar ID has been set up, um, we need to validate any of these potential digital biomarkers. And um, Radar ID really here, from my point of view, sets the stage towards such a validation in the um, Alzheimer's disease context. Thank you very much for listening and I'm happy for any questions.